Go look in the mirror and say, and ask yourself, would I hire myself? Without a degree, without experience, non-sales background, no connections, but it is possible. And if I were in your situation dealing with some of those challenges, this is what I would do. In today's video, I will be sharing, is a tech sales bootcamp worth it? And I will also be outlining the pros and cons of doing a tech sales bootcamp as a means of getting hired in tech. The reason I'm qualified to make this video is because I started out my career as an SDR right out of college. I've since been promoted six times. I forex my income. I'm currently a senior account executive and I have absolutely nothing to sell you, nor am I looking to take a percentage of your income post hire like many of these boot camps are. Based on making over 500 videos in the last two years talking about tech sales, one of the most common questions I get is how do I actually find a job? Perhaps you don't have a college degree. Maybe you were looking to make a career switch from a non-traditional, non-tech background. Perhaps you're just unhappy in your current opportunity and you realize, hey, there's so much upside in tech, that's where I wanna be. I'm here to tell you, you absolutely have everything it takes to make your dreams become reality. It's just a matter of how do you put yourself in the best situation to find that right opportunity. In today's video, I will be showing you how. Tech sales boot camps make money by charging you a cost to be a part of their class. One of the more reputable boot camps, SV Academy, charges about $10,000 for a roughly 10 to 12 week course, and then ideally you get placed in your job afterwards. Some boot camps also charge you a percentage of your income post hire. So for example, if you land an SDR job that pays you $80,000 a year, you would have to pay 10% of your income back to the boot camp for a pre-negotiated set period of time. These boot camps also make money by charging their partners, AKA the companies that inevitably will hire you, it costs to be a part of the group, and I'd imagine there's some sort of placement negotiation fee as well. The biggest objection I have as to why you may not wanna do a tech sales bootcamp is I don't think it's worth it to trade off a percentage of your upside post getting hired, meaning you may not have to pay a whole lot for the bootcamp, they rationalize, hey, we'll help you find a job, and then eventually you get this salary, you get this commission payment, and then you have to constantly pay back a percentage of your income. I don't think under any circumstances it's ever worth giving away a percentage of your upside as a person. Ethically, I don't see how you could do that for someone else. I, I, I think it's almost criminal in a way because you, someone hardworking, wants to be successful, wants to provide a great future for yourself, your loved ones, your family, giving away a percentage of that upside to someone that is simply training you to find a job that you otherwise could most likely do on your own, I don't see how they justify it and I don't see why people would ever give that up but that is one of the trade-offs of doing the bootcamp. My second objection on tech sales bootcamps is all of the information you will learn throughout the duration of the curriculum. You can learn all that info for free online through channels like mine, through other tech sales business career related channels. Make sure to subscribe to my channel now as I have nothing to sell you. I'm here to offer value. Bottom line, you can find everything you need to know based on being proactive, based on knowing how to search, based on knowing how to read, listen, observe. So you can do it all on your own. And my third and final objection is when you look at some of these boot camps. So for example, I researched SV Academy, their leader of curriculum, she has never had a sales job. So the person designing the program worked in academia and has never actually sold. So why would you want to learn from someone who has never actually done the job that you want to do? This is one of the biggest challenges I have in my job learning from enablement because salespeople want more enablement and then they get time put on their calendars and they say, I don't want to actually do the training. I want to do the selling. And when you're learning from someone, you want to learn from someone that has been there, that has done that, that has been in the trenches. I have made over 47,000 cold calls and I'm not trying to profit from your situation. I'm here to offer value because I like helping people and I want to connect with other like-minded people and build a community. But could you imagine paying $10,000 to be a part of a course that was designed by someone who has never actually done the thing you want to do. But there is good in tech sales boot camps, and that's what I'm gonna talk about now. Although these boot camps are for profit organizations that are trying to capitalize on your situation or feeling of hopelessness, I do believe they offer value in exchange for your time and money. The primary value of doing a tech sales boot camp, in my opinion, is if you can be a part of a organization or a program 
that has a partner ecosystem with other companies that are looking to hire specifically from that program, I think that that's a big value add because if you can pay someone a fixed amount of money and they can get you in contact or help you navigate the uncertainty with that hiring process and put you in front of the people that wanna hire you, I do believe there is a lot of value in that service. And then the other value add of the boot camps is the cohort-based learning. I'm a big fan of this, meaning um, they try and sell you on the urgency of there's limited space left in our class, which I understand, and they have um, certain class sizes, so you will actually learn with other people who are going through some of the similar challenges you're facing. Other people that are coming from other non-tech industries, other people that are coming from non-traditional sales backgrounds, other people that may or may not have a college degree. So you will get to learn and you will get to struggle with other people through a similar situation. And, and I do believe that is a big value add because one, they can help you from an emotional standpoint say, hey, we're all in it together, it's tough, we'll find a job. But two, when you actually get hired, if you're able to remain in contact with some of these people, perhaps you guys can collaborate and continue to get better and maybe even develop a friendship. So that's pretty cool. I feel fortunate that I was able to get hired into tech sales with no internships, no sales experience, no connections, no recommendations. I was a part of a sales organization in college and I went to our career fair and we had partners that were looking to hire folks specifically like me. So that was the low hanging fruit and that was a big advantage. So I can't truly empathize with how challenging it must be for you if you're coming from a background without those advantages, without a degree, without experience, non-sales background, no connections. But it is possible. And if I were in your situation dealing with some of those challenges, this is what I would do. It starts with increasing your value in the marketplace. Go look at yourself in the mirror right after this video. I know it sounds funny, but truly go look in the mirror and say, and ask yourself, would I hire myself? And if you can't look back at yourself directly in the eyes and say with 100% confidence, yes, I would hire me, that means you have work to do. And the work I would prioritize is on self-development growth and then improving your personal brand. From a self-development standpoint, this was something I deliberately focused on in college. So I started reading much more and I started watching channels with people that were like-minded, that were obsessed with the success, that were driven. One recommendation that you can do today is go to Amazon and order the five most popular sales books. I would also recommend ordering a journal. This is something that I picked up years ago. I write my journal daily and I write down my goals. I write down how I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, and the better you can process these issues and the limitations, the self-beliefs, once you can start to figure that out, you can start to focus more on the future and where you're going and you write down those goals. From a personal brand standpoint, I would argue that your LinkedIn profile is arguably just as, if not more important than your basic resume. Both need to pass the eye test. So if you do not have a fully developed LinkedIn page, I would go work on that as well. You can go take a look at my LinkedIn, it's just my name if you want an example of what it could look like. But you need this to look good and you need to start promoting yourself. So start posting on LinkedIn. And I know that that could be scary, but if you're not posting on LinkedIn, then that's gonna hold you back from maximizing your success. This is something I started doing a year and a half ago. I'm not a good writer, but by posting on LinkedIn, it's helped me build relationships, build connections, build my personal brand. So I know if things were to not work out at my current employer, I could go find a job literally in a day. I have hundreds of job offers in my inbox and I don't share that to brag. I share that because I have deliberately built my personal brand to the point where people look at me as a thought leader in the sales space when I'm just like you. I'm just like someone that started the job and I actually do the work and I take the action. So I focus on building the personal brand. And if you don't know what to say, go follow 10, 15 people that you respect, admire, people that you want to eventually be in a position with and go comment on all of their posts consistently. By doing that, that will help you to one, understand their perspective, where they're coming from, and two, they'll start to see your name, and then maybe you connect with them, maybe you start talking with them, and then maybe they help get you connected to a hiring manager, recruiter, and that's just an example of how you increase your value in the marketplace by reading these books, take these ideas, put them online, you gotta absorb content to create content, start building your personal brand, and that will inherently increase your odds of finding a job. The lazy way out is just paying someone $15,000 to say, hey, go fix my problem. Bottom line, is it worth it? 
I think it depends on your situation and you, can, and you could justify it either way. But if you're looking for more free content to get better, go take a look at Sales Prestige Podcast Episode 2. I brought on Tech Sales Tom. He helps people get hired at Tech Sales, 200K followers on TikTok. And he tells his story, um, how it took him 70 applications to get hired in tech, that di- the dynamics between big tech, small tech, um, and, and then what that could mean and look like for you. So I really think you're gonna find a lot of value in that episode. It's gonna be the first link in the description below. Believe in yourself as you already have greatness within you, you absolutely can go make it happen. It just starts with taking action. Let me know if I can help you in any way, shape or form in the comments. You can DM me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to help. This is what I do on the side and I love seeing the stories of people who say, hey, I got hired at DocuSign. Hey, I just got hired at Snowflake and I say, that's so cool because four months ago you had no prospects and now you landed an SDR job at a reputable software company. That lights me up, so let me know how I can help. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button now, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future sales videos just like this one. Let's make it happen.